Welcome to Body Sculpt of New York, Six Weeks to Fitness podcast, where we hope to inform, motivate, encourage, and inspire you towards living a healthier lifestyle. And now, here's your host, the president of Body Sculpt of New York, Vince Ferguson. Hi, welcome to episode 170 of my Six Weeks to Fitness podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Did you know that it is far easier for your child to get a college scholarship in the sport of fencing than in any of the major sports like basketball, football, baseball, and soccer? It's also a sport that helps you to lose weight and get into shape. Now, you may think that fencing is too expensive, but in this episode of my podcast, I want to introduce you to Coach Moses Sistrunk Jr. out of Harlem, New York. He has taken the sport of fencing to a whole new level. He has made it exciting, fun to learn, and most of all, affordable for inner city children. Listen to what Coach Moses has to say about his fencing opportunity. And if you're in the New York City area, I highly recommend that you and your child visit Coach Moses and take advantage of these affordable fencing classes. So... That's why I, I, I'm doing what I'm doing because I want them to get the opportunity I never had. I never did fencing in high school. I never knew it, it went to high school. And I never really knew it went to college. So I found this out as I was learning how to teach. So I said, wait a minute. If you know, I could have had this opportunity? So I didn't know. I didn't know. So now, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure that they get that opportunity that I didn't have. Moses Sistrunk Jr., also known as Coach Moses, is a Harlem-born enthusiast of the sport of fencing since 1991. Coach Moses' dedication to the sport began at Our Children's Foundation, Inc., a nonprofit organization that serves the Harlem community with after-school and summer programs. It was here where he met Coach Whittold, MJ Rack, who was the fencing instructor at the, at the time. Since 2012, Coach Moses has been running his own program called Inner City Fencing, which is a program that uses the sport of fencing to develop lifelong skills in young people from underrepresented and underserved communities throughout the New York metropolitan area. At present, he is developing a nonprofit organization called Inner City Fencing Initiative, Inc., that aims to increase the physical and financial accessibility of fencing across the New York City area. He works with local organizations such as my nonprofit organization, Body Scope of New York, and others to help expose more young athletes to the sport of fencing. His goal is to raise the funds to make programs such as these consistent and reliable for students in all areas of underserved communities. This is his way of continuing his passion and giving back to the community through the sport of fencing. And I'm thrilled to have Coach Moses on my Six Weeks of Fitness podcast. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. But before we talk about your program, Inner City Fencing, tell my listeners, where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? Well, I actually grew up um, since January of 1980 in uh, what they call Grant Housing, right on 125th Street. So I've been there for over 20, over I would say 30 years right now um, that I've been in that area. And growing up, uh, you know, I have a younger brother. Um, I, I had a pretty good childhood. My father was always active. He always had us going out there doing different activities and stuff. He always makes sure Saturdays and Sundays, we were out there doing some type of activity. He did not want us sitting around the house. So um, so I was always active. And my mother, basically um, around 11, 12 years old, um, actually 11 years old, I actually remember November 5th of 1989, on a Tuesday. Yes, I remember this. <laughs> um, I came uh, <laughs> uh, to our children's, our children's foundation. Um, and that became a blessing to me because it was right across the street from my house. At, you know, and I did all types of activities. I, you know, I did fencing, which is one of the activities I did. I used to do ballet, tap, martial arts, African drum class, sign language. So 
So I got exposed to all those activities at a very young age and just exposed me to different things. So I was very fortunate that my mother brought me here, and I've been here ever since. So we talk about nearly 32 years of me being exposed and working for our Children's Foundation. Wow, and that's all basically in the community of Harlem, Yes. correct? Yes. Wow. So w where did you receive your training to become a fencer? Was it there? Well, I learned to do fencing here, but what ended up happening was back in 2000, I pretty much, um, unfortunately, around this time, I suffered a tragedy. My girlfriend had just passed away from cancer, and I was there when she passed away. And wow. up, so what ended up happening was uh, my coach used to come and visit. And, you know, he recognized me. He was like, oh, hey, I remember you. You used to be that skinny brush. You used to be all around fencing. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he remembered me, and he basically brought me um, – he literally brought me to his uh, place that he had just remodeled because he has a fencing club in Queens. And he used to come, let me come, come by and, and just practice around. So I would come by, do a little fencing, and they actually had fencing here at, at the foundation at the time. I was, I was a junior counselor here at the foundation. So the guy that originally was here, I don't remember his name at all, he left. And then my, my boss at the time knew my fencing coach. She said, hey, how would you like to teach fencing? And I looked at him like, but I don't know how to. And before I could finish the sentence, he said, you can make 25 an hour. I will find a way how to teach fencing because I never made 25 <laughs> an hour in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. and that's how I got exposed to it. And then my coach, what he would do is he would have me go to coaches conferences. Like I, this was all like a whole nother world of fencing to me as being a, an instructor. So, and it, this is under the United States Fencing Coaches Association. And so I, I was under them since 2006. Had no idea what I was looking at, no idea what they were talking about. He just kind of plopped me there and be like, get to know your, get to know. He, he promoted me literally. And I had no idea. I'm like, why is he promoting me? I have no idea what I'm doing. But he <laughs> saw me as a fencing instructor. And that's how I got exposed to fencing on that level and teaching it and exposing it and learning more stuff about it. Now, you mentioned something about your fencing training. Tell my listeners more about your training and certifications. Well, my certification, um, I got uh, what they call a assistant monteur um, in 2010. And this is under the United States Fencing Coach Association. You there's a nonprofit organization, and basically what they do is um, they realize in the past, most fencing instructors, we got – we were under an instructor. And so we were grandfathered in as far as instruction. Now what they're doing is they make sure that you're getting continuing education. You get an actual uh, uh, lessons so that you can become a better instructor. So they teach us how to do warm up stretches, um, you know, just things so that to make sure that you're teaching fencing in a safe, and in safe environment. And they want to make sure that if, if you run a club, that you know what the ins and outs of running the club are and how to deal with that. So you have different training on that. And they also have training on the different disciplines, the different weapons. So, so that's what they do. And they do it every year. Now, since COVID, they've been doing it virtually. But every year we, we have a, a training. And I'm also a member of the association as well. So um, I, I got my certification as a FOIL instructor back in 2012 and passed. So can we do a practical and a um, online, or I would say multiple choice. So you do a written multiple choice and you have a practical exam. So, and they touch on both. Which is hands on. Yes, yes. You said foil. Exactly what is that? Foil um, is just a web, is a flexible weapon. Has a rub, well, the one that I use is has a fle uh, rubber tip. It's a practical practical one. And it's 110 centimeters long and very flexible. And the target is what we call a vest target. So no arms, no legs, just the stomach, chest, and back. And the new rule is part of your neck. So, oh, really? Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> now, it sounds like you're always being 
um, up the upgraded. You're always training. You're getting educated more and more on fencing each year, which is great. And it also sounds like they teach you the business of fencing too. Is that correct? Yes, yes. When I last went to the conference in 2018, we was at uh, the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. And wow. yeah. we, for seven days, seven straight days, we were training in our discipline. So, wow. So, and yes, yeah, that's how they do it. And for, for us, you would think, you know, for a person like, remember, you, you do this from nine in the morning to five in the evening, you would think that's a boring job. But for us, Part of it is verbal, and part of it is us getting a group lesson from the instructors, teaching us better ways of, of teaching fencing to the kids or to our, to our hmm. students, whether it be yeah. uh, to a younger child to an older adult. Oh, okay. Excellent. So you teach kids and adults. And I, but I, I do know that. You know, Let me just be uh, perfectly honest with the listeners. I know that because for approximately 12 to 15 years, I've known you. And you participated as one of my um, only fencing instructors for our annual Children's Sports and Fitness Expo here in New York. And I will say, out of the 30 activities that we present at this event, fencing was by far the most popular. But what is it about fencing that makes it so popular, especially with the young people? I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, I didn't really know I was the most popular. Because <laughs> 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 I, I know that Every time I did your program, I always had to get more equipment. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so exactly. That's why. I, but I think what it is is we always like, even as little kids, we like swinging swords. It's just the, the imagination of, of swinging a sword at somebody. <clears throat> um, I know I did. I, my influences were Star Wars and um, the television show Highlander. And I love those shows, you know, swinging a sword. So, that's how I got into it, and the kids wanted to do the same thing. So yes, uh, and, and over the years I've gotten better. So now I got foam swords, you know, because I know when we, I used to start off, I used to carry like four, five bags of equipment. <laughs> so oh, now I'm a little yes. now I'm a little lighter now. I, I have the foam swords. I'm trying to more invest more in those, so they can get a little taste of it and have the kids wear masks now instead so of just wearing the jackets and everything else. It, it does get hot when you wear those fencing jackets. So. Yes, it does. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Now, you know, we work, my organization focuses on young people and basically young people in underserved populations in New York, similar to your focus. But now why have you made it your focus, though, when it comes to the children and underserved populations? Because cause I was one of those kids when I learned fencing. Yes. Learned nice. So, yes. and I didn't know. I was, I was just, to me, I'm just taking an activity. Never did I realize this would become my passion. Like I said, my tragedy led to me to my passion. So, you know, it was a way of coping at the time. And then we're well, coping and trying to impress a girl at the same time. That didn't work out. So, <laughs> so the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the defensive yes. part, you know, turned out. And, you know, I like me because for me, it'd be different because I know a lot of people that teach fencing, um, They've had experience competing on a higher level. I've done sporadic competitions, but I guess because I can relate to the kids more of, hey, this is what fencing is. I, I definitely know how you feel because I was there too. I can share my story with them. You know, I'm from Grant Housing. If I say Grant Housing, the people say, oh, yeah, I know what that is. You know, but for people who don't know what Grant is, you know, he was the 18th president of the United States and the Civil War general. But that's just me because I'm a presidential fanatic. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yes, so I get it. And, and a lot of parents, they cannot afford to do fencing classes. Fencing classes are very expensive. So that's why I, I, I'm doing what I'm doing because I want them to get the opportunity I never had. I never did fencing in high school. I never knew it, it went to high school. And I never really knew it went to college. So I found this out as I was learning how to teach. So I said, wait a minute. You mean I could have had this opportunity? So I didn't know. Yes. I didn't know. So now, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to make sure that they get that opportunity that I didn't have. Nice. Very much a very good role model you are. I will say that, man, for sure, for sure. Now, I also understand that when it comes to scholarships, it's, you know, it's easier, in a sense, to get a scholarship if you're doing something like fencing because 
so many people don't. They most most kids, most parents, they enroll their kids in basketball, football, soccer, tennis. But it's harder to get scholarships there because there's so many people. But with fencing, it's not as many, especially of us doing it. So would you say that it's easier to get a scholarship for that reason? It is because a lot of the other sports are saturated. You know, think about it. How many how many basketball players are you going to get? How many football players are you going to get? You know what I mean? So with fencing, first of all, I feel like it's a little I – uh, I don't want to use the term being in a little mob, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yes. no one knows about it. You know, so it's like you have your own little secret society. So very few yes. people <laughs> know about it. So because even when I – Carry my bag. People are like, oh, you play guitar? Like, no. Fencing instructor. What? Fencing? People do fencing? They, they, they look at me weird because they yes. associate fencing with Caucasian people and Asians, which they, they would not be wrong because when right. I go to certain clubs, certain fencing clubs, that's what I see. You know, but a lot, but a lot of us are coming up in the sport. So, but the opportunities are there because every time I go to the coaches' conferences, guess who I bump into? Collegiate coaches. And what did they ask for? Matter of, matter of fact, I would think about almost, I would say, eight years ago when we went to our last convention, one of the ladies, she was from San Diego, and she grabbed me. She's like, you have any fences? You have any fences? You have any fences? I was like, personal space? <laughs> like, like I don't have any kids yet. Don't 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 wow. get on me. But yeah, no, they're looking. And even in 2018, well, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. 2019, when I went to um, Notre Dame and I spoke to the coach, uh, Coach Gia, he and matter of fact, they just won their uh, NCAA's Notre Dame. So we. When we um, so him, he was like, he's trying to find fencers in house and not international. He's trying to get homegrown fencers. So really, yeah, because what, what tends to happen is kids think when you do fencing, you have to go to Harvard, Princeton, Yale. Yes, those are the top. But let's say you fall short from going there. You got Notre Dame, you know. Um, see, I well, I would say Columbia, but Columbia is right up there too. Um, you press it. Uh, well, I'm talking about the ones that are not those. Like I would say, oh, okay, not you know, Ivy like, League. Yeah, you know, they're not the Ivy League. Like I know Notre Dame is one of them. Like you can't go to, if you can't go to one of those, go to Notre Dame, go to Columbia. Uh, I believe. No, I don't want to assume right now. I'm trying to think of colleges off the top of my head. Uh, Ohio State. When we went there, because I saw one of the coaches there. You know, so yeah, they're they're there. You know, and. Mainly, I would say women. Okay, this is the this is the year. This is the this is the time period for for women to to get the opportunity. They're looking, like they are looking, like that. This is what I'm trying to push. If girls came and like I said, they, they were coming at me like, "Do you have any censors?" You know, and I know some collegiate coaches. It's, it's not me. Not hard for me to say, "Hey." Uh, I, I have a I have a potential student now. I have to be careful with that because of the rules of the NCAA's. But yeah, they're looking. Oh, I forgot about um, Temple University. That's another one. That has oh, Temple out of uh, mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, interesting, interesting. Now this sounds to me like a perfect opportunity for young people to get involved with fencing right now. You yeah. know, and, and you're giving them that opportunity. But as as you said, fencing is not and inexpensive. It's not a cheap sport. It costs money. Yes. So how are you how are you offsetting the cost um, of the of fencing for the inner city children? What I'm doing is because I also have a co a co founder, um, uh, Chico Flores Kyle. Um, he's also he's been he's been my, my I call him the mouthpiece of the business because okay because <laughs> because literally usually I'll have him do what I'm doing right now. I usually don't do this. I work with the I do I do the inner workings of, of the business, so only because it's you, I said I'll do it. <laughs> so, well, thank, you know. thank, thank you, Coach. I appreciate so, that. <laughs> but uh, he he's the one that 
goes around the different neighborhoods and talk to parents and talk to organizations and let them know that what we're doing. Because we've been in Queens at one time. Now we're back in Harlem. You know, uh, we do want to kind of spread out and just let people know that we're here. And there are other fencing programs, but we try to make it affordable. So, you know, we made it $75 a month so that at least you're not spending all this money for kids to uh, do fencing. Because I've seen kids, I've seen parents spend three, four hundred dollars for maybe every, maybe a month or two. And I'm being very conservative because I don't know different, pro- you know, this is expensive. Like technically, I charge 75 a month. I really should be charging seventy five dollars and for every thirty minutes. Every class. Every thirty minutes. Every of thirty me. minutes. Me, like me personally, me giving you a lesson. Seventy five dollars. Thirty minutes. That's that's yeah, what I, I should that. be charging. But I don't do that because I'm like, no, that's gonna take away from the students. You know what I mean? So I want them to come in, see if this is something that they like. And then if they like it, then I can go ahead and tap into my resources and find ways of them doing fencing at a cheaper, you know, in a very, no, should say cheaper, level, affordable level, you know. Affordable, right. Yeah, because it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Equipment alone could cost you $500, $1,000. Easy. I, I've seen your equipment. I've carried some of your equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. carried it. I know, I know. I see, I see it firsthand. Mm-hmm. Professional. And, 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 and me personally... You know, at least for the last couple of years, I, I don't have ever paid myself. So I literally put it right back into the business. So I'm constantly getting equipment and making sure that kids have what they have. And if I have assistant coaches, I make sure they get paid first before I do. Because you can see, you've seen the work I have to do, you know, and I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. So, you know, and I'm, yes. <laughs> this, this, is my, this is the month of my birthday, too. So when the Olympics start, it's my birthday. Ah, really? I'll be 43. Wow. Isn't that something, man? But mm-hmm. you're still still a young man. Let's, yes. let's make this happen. So listen, where is your company located in Harlem? Exactly where is it located? Now? We're in the building of our Children's Foundation, which is at 527 uh, West 125th Street. We're located on the second floor. So, uh, yeah, we're on the second floor. So people just, get, just buzz in or just give me a call, and I just go up and come down, and I'll let you in. But. Yeah. Okay, and you're looking for more kids right now, am I correct? Yes, yes, because a lot of people don't know. Like, I, the parents, I have 10 clients right now, and a lot of them say, you've been teaching fifty here all this time? Like, yes. <laughs> no one knows I've been here. Yes. So, yeah. Best kept secret. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? What are some of the many benefits that young people can expect to experience while learning fencing at your, at your school? Well, I would say this because I, I could go draw from my experience. You learn, you really learn about yourself. You, you learn about your offensive or defensive. You know, I realize now as I'm a little bit older, it, it, it depends on the situation. <laughs> so, yes, but okay. when I was younger, I was defensive. So I would wait for the person to come at me, see what they do, and then I would, I would respond. So that's one. Two, uh, you will definitely learn how to, you will learn different languages because languages, uh, language, yeah, really? because uh, fencing is only two languages, English and French. So you have to know a little bit of French. Nice. So I when, I, when I teach, when I teach the kids, I'll tell them how to say things in English and then I'll tell them how to say things in French because if they go out there and compete and they do an international competition, if I say on guard, if we pray, if we pray means, are you ready? LA huh. means go or fence. So if nice. you don't know what they're talking about, how, how would you know? You know, so, yeah. and the other thing is you will learn a different measure, different measurements. We do the imperial system, which is pounds and ounces. And of course, with metric system, you have to learn meters, kilometers, kilograms. Right. So, you, they, so you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to do that. And you're going to learn some geometry, too, because in my class, you will learn how to make a fencing strip and use measurements. Really? Yep. That, that's what I teach in my class. They, they, have, they have to learn that. So that's part of the class. So I, what I do is, because I know other classes teach differently, a lot of folk gear more towards competition. Great. That's what you should do. I'm more about, hey, let's see if you like this first. Okay? 
And if you're serious, then I'll give you towards competition. Because what happens is they'll go to a club that's good to competition. Kids want to do it. It's expensive. Then they're like, I don't like this no more. Then they leave. Right. Wow. So, yes. so my, my thing is, no, I'm, I'm going to do, do the fun part. Come to me. We'll do the fun part. I'm going to break everything up. And then if you feel that you want to do this seriously, then that's a whole other thing we, we, on the side that we can do, and we'll focus on that. So. Hmm. Wow. Nice, nice. Now, there's so much I could ask you, but we don't have a lot of time. But mm-hmm. let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Is fencing a great way to keep fit? Because, you know, obesity is a major issue today among children. Yes, it is. Um, literally, if it wasn't for fencing, I would have been 300 pounds a long time ago. I, I, I would I, I would have gotten there quicker. But it is a great way. <clears throat> I would say it like this. You're not thinking about the workout when you're fencing. You're thinking about how can I get my point? <laughs> okay, so right. you don't think about it. It's a great leg workout, great core workout, great upper body workout. I would say more of a leg workout because you're doing a lot of lunges. A lot. A lot of lunges. Lunges, yes. A whole lot of lunges. So, uh, so yeah. But it's not just about swinging the sword either because a lot of kids, when they come in, they think, oh, just swing the sword. Like, nope. So you get scored on real quick. So, but There's a lot to it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Look, I, I've seen you in action. I've seen how the kids' faces light up, and the parents too. And they always want to know where can they, where can they go to take their kids to continue fencing. And that's so important that you have a place where they can go. You know, right? That's so important. Right. But what about nutrition? Do you touch on that? Is that important to a fencer? Yes, it is. Um, even Tim Morehouse, he he's one of the premier fencers. And what ended up happening with him was, even as a fencer, he used to eat McDonald's. He's eating junk food, and it wasn't until I think it wasn't until 2012 when he I think when he was doing fencing he changed his diet, slimmed down, and he became better. And matter of fact, he became a silver medalist at that time, as, as a team, wow. as a saber. So, and I knew me personally, because uh, I know what happened with me, and I and I'll definitely get into this. You know, a lot of people assume because I teach fencing that I was keeping shape, but year. Uh, for years, I really wasn't doing that. I was really, uh, I wasn't participating with the kids. And then I literally let myself go. I went from, when I first started, from 170 to as heavy as 270. Wow, I was 100 I was, pounds heavier. Yeah, I was 100 pounds heavy. This is a, ma- a matter of, I would definitely say, 15 years. Uh, no, actually 17 years. And what ended up happening was, this is during the pandemic, where I ended up going to the hospital and found out that, I was a type two diabetic. I was walking around wow. being a two type two type di- diabetic and didn't know for three years. They just now told me after I went to the hospital. So I said, wait a minute, really? that, and I didn't take that very well. I really didn't. I that that just blew my mind. So I said, nope. And, but they did tell me my condition was because of weight. So weight, mo- yeah, weight, purely weight. My neurologist told me. He said, I'm not checking your foot. He said. Lose the weight, and then I'll check your foot. He literally told me huh. that. My dietitian said, it's the weight. And my primary care doctor said, it's your weight. So from November to now, I've lost, I would say, 44 pounds because I'm 226 now. Congratulations on that. So you Thank took you. action. Yeah, I was not playing. That scared me. That scared me. And, and it would ne- I would never be the same now. So I, I drink more water now. Um, I definitely incorporate a lot of fruits and vegetables because nice. I didn't do that before. I do eat meat, but I cut down on a lot of the meat consumption. So you change your eating habits. You change yeah. your nutrition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And would you say that do you eat late at night or did you stop doing that as well? If I eat late at night, it would be a, a smoothie or something very healthy. Like it has to be something very light if I eat at night. But that that is that has been put to a halt because I realized that's why my sugar levels is going up. I was eating late at night. Ah, see, just making those subtle changes mm-hmm. makes all the difference. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And now you and you're still you're doing your fencing, but you're slimmer now, and you feel better as a result. And that's what children can look forward to as well. Mm-hmm. Which is great, you know. So, right. And you are now, you're more of a role model because now you're looking more the part, 
not just you know giving instruction, but you're looking more like you're athletic. Yeah, right? right. Yes, yes. You know, I, like I said, I, I, my goal is, and this is what I like about fencing also, you, you, it doesn't stop when you're young. You know, you, I, can yes, be fencing, I can compete at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Compete? Yes, you can compete at those yeah, ages. That, that I didn't know. Wow. Yes, yes. So, yes, sir, you can compete in fencing too, so you're not too old. Yes. You're fit, you're fit <laughs> enough to do it. So, Sign me up. So. Yep. <laughs> so you, really yeah. So that, that, that's what that's what I like about it. You know, I could go out there right now. I have an Olympian named um, Ivan um, Ivan Lee. He's a former Olympian, um, and he's out there competing now. I think he got first place just recently. So and he he just hit forty. Just hit forty. Just hit forty. Yeah. And that's a and that's and that's an African American, right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's that's so impressive, man. You can do this, man. This is mm-hmm. beautiful. Now, where can where can uh, parents find out more about inner city fencing, and and how can they contact you? Well, right now, um, they can they can contact me on my website, innercityfencing.org, or www.innercityfencing.org, and they can check out the website. Mostly, my schedules are there, and, and the pricing and everything. Um, or they can come to me directly at our children's foundation. I'm usually there Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, right now, we're doing the summer schedule, so we're, I'm here from 4 to 6 p.m. So, and that will last until September 10th. Um, so and then the schedule is going to change. But um, I'm usually here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, Perfect. Is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you want to share before the I let you go? Well, um, I would say that we, I, I do a little bit of it, and it's still ongoing, but I am a, what they call a cosplayer, and I don't know if people know what cosplaying is, but you're costume clean. So I, I also go to comic book conventions upstate New York, and I promote fencing and that, and, uh, I, and I do a little bit of amateur stage combat, basically. So, and um, cause I used to do that with uh, two groups with dealing with um, Star Wars for about six years. So um, I'm, I'm developing that class right now. It's not something I'm you now pushing at the moment, but I'm just putting it out there that I, I do do it because um, I tend to meet, when I go to these conventions and I tell them I'm a, I'm a fencer, they're like, oh, I want to do fencing. And then when I go to fencing and I tell them I do cosplay, oh, I want to be a cosplayer. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I got two different worlds that would have come together, yes. but they can't do it because fencers have to compete on the same days that cosplayers do their stuff in the conventions. Wow. wow. Wouldn't you so, know it? <laughs> so, you, so basically one has to – you have to give up one to do it. One for the other. Yes. 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 So I, 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 so I kind of want to – I kind of gave up. Not give up. I ain't give it up. I'm just not competing right now. So I'm doing a little bit of more cosplaying, but at the same time, I am still instructing. But when I compete, I'm gonna have to put it in my schedule. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yes, I hear you. You gotta so, do what you gotta do. Yeah, this is great. Mm-hmm. This is great, Coach. Listen, Coach Moses Sistrunk, on behalf of Body Scope of New York and Six Weeks of Fitness, I truly want to thank you for coming on my show today. No, thank you. It was a pleasure. And to my listeners, I truly hope this program was informative, encouraging, and inspiring, and that you will continue tuning in to our Six Weeks of Fitness podcast. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, Please leave them up on my Six Weeks of Fitness blog at www.sixweeksoffitness.com or email me at vince at sixweeks.com. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Take care. Bye-bye.